All right, so the issue came up about I can turn on comments on my, on my blog, on my pages, and so forth, which is useful because I want people to, to comment. This helps also as we get more into the SEO concepts, uh, being social and, and having people comment and so forth helps my SEO because it shows the search engines that my site is active. That it's not just something that I created and haven't updated a year ago, then the search engines will say it's not relevant. So then they don't put you on page one or something. Uh, they'll put you on page 40 or, or worse. But if we've got comments and we've got sh social sharing and stuff, that's better. The problem, of course, when you open up your 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 site to to the world is that you know you might run into. Uh, it's hard to believe, but sometimes there are mean people on the internet. There are trolls, bad people, and you don't want to be a target to get your your comments overrun with spam and all of that stuff so let's talk about dealing with some of that here in WordPress if you go back over to your settings in uh, under discussion we did look at this uh, I'll mention again the important ones but under settings and discussion we've got various options specifically in the section of right here before a comment appears it says comment must be manually approved and you should turn that on if it is not on. I think by default it's not on and I recommend to turn it on because that way no comments will show up on your on your stuff unless you approve it. Now that does require then that you be vigilant but it'll email you. It'll send you an email and it'll tell you here's a new comment. It'll give you a preview of it and right on the email you can click approve, deny, or spam. So you don't have to log in all the time. It'll email you. So turn that one on. And then, let's see, comment author must be previously approved comment. When it's a, when it's a very big website, people have a lot of work doing that, right? Yeah. If it's a big website, there might be someone full-time dealing with that, sure. Mm -hmm. That's a problem you do want to have because it means you're a big website. Uh, comment author must fill in their email. That's a good one to turn on. That also helps you a little bit more to prevent just robots that that go to different websites just trying to write comments because there's this software, these robots that go from page to page and all they do is fill websites with links back to their free, uh, their free products or cheapcanadianmeds.com and all of that junk. So if you've got that turned on, that helps you a little bit. What helps you even more is this plugin, this tool called Akismet, and it's on by default here. Akismet anti-spam strictness. It's automatically here. It says silently discard the worst and most pervasive spam. So WordPress itself has its own robots that are scanning your comments, and if it sees all of these triggers um, that it associated with 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 spam, it'll just get rid of it. But if you you know, want to really review everything that's going on, you can turn on safe, and anything that Akismet thinks is spam, it'll put it in the spam folder, we'll see where that is, and then you can approve it. But I usually get good results by turning those three on right there. It must be manually approved, must have an email, and strict. So if you made any changes here, you want to save. Now you might not all have this, but I see on the left side here, you have a comment section, I mean, but you might not all have a pending comment like me. So it looks like I've got one pending comment, so I'm going to see what that is. You can click on it just to see the screen, but you might not have any. Actually, does anyone have any number there next to comments? No. We're not popular, <laughs> not popular <laughs> enough yet? Okay. I'm going to click on comments. Hmm. Oh, okay. We've got this notorious spammer right here. Um, and he's uh, writing on my site. So if this were, um, you know, real spam, I have the option, you know, I hover over it and I've got, well, here's my options. Approve it. If it's a good comment, I can let it be shown to the world. I can uh, also reply to it um, so that I, you know, reply to the original poster. I can actually edit their comment. So if I, if I, I can go in and edit their comment, you know, obviously we can be messing with people's comments here, but you have to decide how um, 
how much control of this you want to do, but you can edit their comment. Uh, or if it's not a good comment, we have a few things. If it's if it's like from a real person, but it doesn't really make sense um, as part of the conversation, we can just trash it. But if it's like a bad comment from a spam site or something, well, we've got spam. So let's say this was a good comment. Now all I do is click approve. I made a mistake, no problem. I can go back and unapprove it. So I always have the way to turn it on and off, to edit it, to trash it or spam it, to reply to the person. After you've uh, after you've set it to spam, I believe it automatically blocks the person because usually one account keeps sending spam, so this is smart enough to do that. And now on the screen here, at the top, it would tell me, show me all my comments, show me comments that are pending that I have not dealt with yet, show me comments that I have approved, so comments that are spam. The spam folder will clear itself out eventually. And those that you've trashed accidentally, you can bring them back. So it even tells you their, you know, whatever the person wrote, and it'll tell you their IP address. That's their, that's their address of their computer. So, you know, if it's a really bad spam, I suppose you can report them, and that's their address. But that's the address for this college, so don't report that address. And I can go to View Page. So this was on the Contact page before I turned off comments, and there we go. I've got a comment in the Contact page. And if I didn't want it there, well, I can just unapprove it. And I don't have a comment there anymore. So this comments screen is where you're going to deal with those comments. There's another screen related to that. Any questions so far, though? Okay, the other screen related to comments is up here. If you hover over dashboard, we, ha we haven't looked at this section very much yet, but hover over dashboard and you've got Akismet stats. So again, Akismet is just this little mini app that's running, helping you out all the time, 24-7. Um, related to your site, uh, comments, and so forth. So if you go to the Kismet stats here, it'll tell you what's what's going on. So if you've got a lot of traffic and so forth, it'll tell you here. Um, s total spam, total ham, missed spam, and I always forget what they what they call ham again. Um, what the heck is ham? Spam. Most people know it's the unwanted commercial comments on their blog. Ham is what we call its counterpart, legitimate comments. Okay, that's a funny term for that. So spam are the bad comments that robots and stuff put there, and ham are the real comments that real people put. So some stats there in the last six months, year, all time, which days are more popular, and so forth. Just stats. There's spam, ham, and yummy pie. What is yummy pie? Oh, pie, it's a pie chart. It's most likely a pie chart of what is good and what is bad. Where, where do you write your email address in order to the website sending you flags? When we created the WordPress site the first time it asked us, but let's look where we can change it. So the question is where where do we edit where do we add our our our, our email to get notified? It's over here. If we go over to settings, general. Or is it? No, it's over at users my profile. Settings? Yeah, it depends on the version of WordPress. This one uh, has it over on users, I believe, and then the other version we'll look at later. It's under general settings, but let's go to users, and then my profile. No. 
but when we created our WordPress account two weeks, three weeks ago, we set it at that moment. But I believe we can change it here under profile. Uh, no, okay, it's someplace else. It's probably up over under here. Personal settings. Okay, here it is. They moved it over here. So it's under user personal settings. So under users and personal settings, you'll see a section there on email, and it tells you right there. Whenever any notifications are generated, such as new comment, new user, that's where it gets sent to. This is where you can also change your password. And under personal settings at the top here, you can also do this um, because when we get to this later, all of these sites that I show you for these clients, they're live on the internet, but usually we work on them privately on a, on, on a different server. And then when we're ready to make it live, we put it on the live server. And when you're logged in, it's hard to tell sometimes, am I on the live server or the testing server? What I like to do is right here on this screen of user profiles is this admin color screen scheme. Because I like to change it when I'm working on the live site. I like to turn it to the sunrise setting, which is when you save it, you'll see that you've got this big red scary reminder that you're editing the live site. Be careful what you're doing. When I'm over on my testing site in the private server, I put it on the soothing blue color scheme, which tells you, okay, I'm safe. I'm over on the testing server. The default, of course, is the black color, and you've got the other themes. So the only thing, really, there's no explanation about your color scheme. It doesn't do anything, really. But I, I like to use it to remind me which version of the site am I editing. And I like to use the sunrise theme or the sunrise scheme to remind me, this is the live site, be careful. Okay, um, can you come mm -hmm. to the You mean like a regular person going to your site or to administrators? Mm -hmm. Like a regular person going to the site and reading whatever you tell them they need to stack up. That's a little more advanced. Um, I have not had to do it actually usually all of the sites I've worked on are in English I suppose they could also be in other languages but um, I'm not exactly sure that's a little bit complicated from what I've read uh, and I can pull up the instructions how to do that but I personally haven't done it very many times to really give a best answer but there is a way to it's called a uh, WordPress multi-user site and it is allows us to a site to be translated to multiple languages but it does need some setup Okay, let's say one of the one of the things we'll do at this point, we're all if we go back to visit site, we're all I think we're all using the same uh, theme minnow. Down at the bottom it says this is the minnow theme. If you're not, <coughs> that's okay. But I want to talk about that. I want to talk about changing themes. We mentioned it briefly when we first started WordPress. Now we'll mention it again. The great thing about WordPress is uh, it's known as a, as a CMS, Content Management System. And what that basically means is that your content is separate from your design. So whatever I write on the home page exists as, as this data. 
whatever I write in the blog posts exists as data, and then how it looks exists as something separate. And the difference between that and classic ways of making a website is that, for example, if we were using only HTML or only Dreamweaver, the page that we created is linked together in the content and the design. So later when I want to update my design, I'm going to have a hard time doing that because every page needs to be edited that has content. WordPress separates the two, so I can change the design with a couple clicks and all the content automatically goes to the new design much more easily. With, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, all the pages, right? All the pages, yeah. So uh, let's do that. Let's go over to, um, if you, you need to go back to the dashboard, hover over appearance and select themes. So under themes, this takes us to the um, WordPress, this takes us over to the WordPress themes gallery, right here under themes. And at the top it tells me um, these are trending themes. I can look at popular, I'm not sure exactly the difference between trending and popular. I guess trending means at the moment this is cool, and popular means throughout all time these are the most popular. And the newest, these are the newest. So as I, I'm going to look here under trending. So I'm, I've currently got Minnow, and then it's telling me right here, Salem, I might like that one. And there's Wilson and Boardwalk and Mirror. So any one of these that you see here, I'm going to try Fortune. Oh, not that one. I'm not going to do one that says Purchase. I'm going to do one that says Simply Activate. Notice some of these say Purchase. Yes, you do sometimes have to pay if you want to to purchase a theme and they range in price that one's forty nine dollars that one is seventy five dollars that one's a hundred and fifty dollars and I've seen th themes just themes for two thousand dollars so if you design your own WordPress themes you could be making money off of that that's much more advanced though we, we're not really gonna talk about that it's pretty advanced but I can point you toward resources if you want to get into it. All you need to, to do to design your own WordPress themes is know a little bit of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP. Easy. Right. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for the information. Yep. <laughs> so when I, my company does websites for clients, we have three choices. You have three choices. You have find a cool theme, a cool free theme, and just activate it and use it and every theme has a little bit of customization that we can do to it we'll explore that a little later but let's say for a client that they're on a really tight budget five hundred dollars they want a website so what we could do my company could do is we with the client you know we, we're very open with the client we always tell them what our technology is what we offer them etc etc we tell them we're gonna set yourself we're gonna set you up in WordPress and we're going to show you examples of themes and you choose which one you like and we'll customize it to a point. $500. So then we activate it. That's level one of WordPress design. Take an existing theme, customize it a little bit, whatever the customization options are here. The next level up is the more popular one we do for clients, which is again, we start with a foundation, we start with a, a cool theme, and we customize it even more, but this time we get into editing actual code. We edit the HTML, we edit the CSS, we edit the JavaScript, sometimes the PHP. We edit all of those foundational technologies. The point of that is like if, you've, if you buy a classic car at the junkyard and then you, you rebuild it to make it uh, you know, amazing again, to take off the rust and put new tires on it and, and update it. You're starting with this classic car, but you're updating it, making it better. That's the second level that we do. That's even more, like $1,000, $1,500. And um, it's starting with a foundation. We just customize it to the client's needs. And then the third level, the most expensive, which is not going to be less than $3,000, is we're going to make a site from scratch for them. But that's going to require a lot of custom coding of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP. So just to start that one piece of that project for the client, it's going to be $3,000 never mind about content, photos, 
social media, all of that stuff. That's a much more expensive option, much more time-consuming. So every one of these sites that I've shown you so far for clients, and you can always see a lot more at, at my website, pmdinteractive.com, all of those are based on that level too, in that we take uh, a theme that the client likes, and then we customize it. Even our own website is a theme that we did not create from scratch. We don't have time for that. We, we want to work for clients. This has been customized. Color schemes, um, logos, um, JavaScript behaviors, slideshows, all of that stuff that's been customized. But it did start with a foundation. All of these guys here, except for grade by grade, all of these guys also have um, a WordPress theme that we started off browsing here with the client. So the, the ones that don't have a price, they are, they are free? They are free, yeah. So for our activity, for the class here, you don't need any of the paid ones. We're going to spend our money elsewhere. But notice the range of price. This one's $175, but why? This is the thing that, unfortunately, in this business is a reality, depending on the type of client you're trying to get. Sometimes clients don't value your work because a client is going to value something tangible. You're going to create a painting, and then maybe someone thinks, yeah, that painting's worth $500. It's a real thing. I can put it on my wall. People will love it. Or in the world of marketing, people are going to value, you know, see those boxes of the game consoles up there and stuff, that poster? That costs thousands of dollars to create, millions maybe in an ad campaign. And then people pay for that because it's a real tangible thing. A website, where does a website exist? It exists on the internet. It's not real. You can see it on a cell phone or a laptop, but it's not a tangible thing to a certain degree. And unfortunately, clients think, you're going to charge me $500 for a website I can get? I can get a, uh, my cousin to do it for a hundred dollars. Sure, get your cousin to do it. Do they have the education? Do they have the experience? Are they going to tech support you? All of that. So when I see here, and when uh, when when I said some of these are not free, and some of you gasped, well, again, that's the mentality of this has been designed by professionals. It does something professional. Um, this is part of the investment of doing business. But you will be able to get really far with a lot of free things, a free theme, free plugins, etc. And here and there, I'll be mentioning recommendations of paying for things here and there, but uh, they're not um, they're not requirements. So for our purposes right now, find a cool free theme that you like, and click activate. So I I have a question. Mm -hmm. All these things. The one that we can choose when you are looking at the, the internet, uh, even if you see it in, in the cell phone or iPad, mm -hmm. it, is, it, is, it is going to see the world, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good point. Did you guys hear that? The, the question is, how do we choose a, a theme? Guys? Guys over here? Um, the question was, what... Uh, how do we choose a theme, or, or what's the concept of choosing a theme that grows and shrinks to the size of your monitor? Because I might get a theme that looks really good on this big monitor, but then it does not look good on a little uh, device like this or on an iPad. And that concept is known as responsive web design. So when we're here on this screen, we can actually also, we've got, um, uh, if you look at a theme details, it tells you about itself, and you'll often have somewhere listed here responsive design. See right here, responsive layout. So if you're browsing themes here, or you're browsing themes over on Google, because you can also go to Google and search free WordPress themes, and you'll get a million of them. But you want to make sure nowadays, especially, that you find a theme that somewhere says responsive layout or responsive web design, because then it'll respond to the size of your monitor. If it doesn't say that. It should say that, yeah. Older websites were not responsive. They were designed to work best on a nice big monitor. And now that everyone uses iPads or tablets or mobile devices, your website might not look good on a small screen unless you get a responsive layout 
Sí, ma. Well, the newer versions of Dreamweaver, they do have they do have the ability, you know, this is the newest version of Dreamweaver, I believe, Dreamweaver CC. There is a section right here, fluid grid layout. So this is this is newer. You will be able to do responsive with Dreamweaver now. But yeah, older versions did not have this. You had to do it manually. So I'm not exactly sure when they added this, maybe CS6, maybe Creative Cloud version 1. I'm not sure when. But the newer versions do have a way to do responsive. And they call it fluid grid layout. But that's a responsive type of layout. The newer versions have it, yes. But remember, Dreamweaver is not free, and WordPress is. Yeah. But it's still, it can still be useful. All right, so did you find your perfect theme, your perfect free theme? I'm going to select plain. So what you need to do when you find your theme, you need to do two things. You find the theme, and then you click... Um, you click activate. What it's going to do is it's going to connect over to the gallery and copy it over to your um, to your site. You might get a screen that says customize it. Just ignore that for the moment. I'm going to close that. And now the screen here under themes now tells me that the active theme is the one that I just chose, sequential. And I want to see it. I want to go over to visit site. So here's my site just as it was a moment ago, and here's my new site. Visit site. And so all of the content automatically transferred over. The new design is there. I'm missing my menu bar. That didn't exactly transfer over because remember, depending on the theme, It'll have different menu sec men menu areas, and this theme does not know where would you like your menu set. So it did transfer things over, but I'm missing my menu. Let's fix that. Go back to WP uh, Admin. Go back to Appearance Menus. Appearance. And then depending on your theme, notice it says, here's your menu, theme location. They're all turned off. It doesn't know where to put the menu. Mine has primary menu and footer menu. That one wasn't there with the previous theme. So that's what I'm saying about it depends on the theme. And that's actually going to be a common response to a lot of questions as we go on through the semester. You say, how do I do this? How do I do that? Why does yours look like that and mine looks like that? I'm going to often say it depends on the theme. Appearance and menu you said, right? Mm -hmm. Question. I have a problem with the camera customizer to for my um WP admin to come out. So when I come here, the customizer. And then it just is for the screen. Well I'm gonna show a customized screen in a moment. Um but to get back you know back up expander and cancel and then I'll come in and fix it up. Okay. All right, so here you want to choose uh, where does your menu go, save this, and then visit site. If you want to change the, this kind of website, can you do it? You can, but um, we'll look at this in a moment. But there's um, there's this customize screen, which we'll look at in a moment, and then we'll talk about later about being able to customize it through code, which gives you even more control. 
but now I changed it and I saved it and I visit site and there it is so this particular theme shows a menu like that so again it depends on the theme on the minnow theme it had this little drop down this little hamburger menu here it opened like that and now on this new one that I chose uh, it's got on this horizontal one that I that I expected the problem though is uh, probably the size of my monitor is affecting it but on mine it's cutting off the word there uh, it's probably my monitor and it's got the drop down look at that I hover over that one and the Twitter drop down again if yours looks different it depends on the theme go to the blog there's my blog so all of these fonts changed all of these colors changed all of the design changed just by changing my theme So if you want to check out another theme, you can go back to themes. You can you you can switch between as many as you want. Notice if you change your your view up here, if you go back to appearance and then themes, you can say, okay, well, what is popular? I can look at popular. So these are popular. Obviously, the problem with going with popular is that if you choose one of these popular ones, someone else might have also chosen it, so your site is not that unique anymore. Newest, well, um, if you find a good new theme, then you might have it before other people. If you're over on the premium section right here, then more likely you will have a more unique theme than other people because not a lot of people want to pay. You want to get as much free as possible and that's fine but uh, again in this world of web design the more you pay the, the better results you get because you know you can uh, I deal with potential clients all the time that the big problem of course is is the fee for it all and we tell them okay well no problem I can get you in contact with some students and they'll help you out for your price range and you'll get a good you'll get a result and uh, not to belittle any students but you know if you've only taken one or two or three classes you can do websites but you might not be able to do this kind of caliber and uh, but if, if if that works out it, it has worked out that I have people connect with a student and they get a great result and they're fine but oftentimes in the uh, in more times what happens is you do have to pay for quality and just because it's not a real thing you can hold people think that why would I pay that much but this is your calling card this is your sales screen you know you go to a you go to a restaurant in the real world that has a really bad paint job you know I read I wrote a really mean a uh, Yelp review for this place a, a year ago that was really bad and it's like well how can I enjoy the food if there's like a broken mirror on the on the door over there there was a box on the front door where people can donate shoes there was um, like no napkins and like it was a terrible experience and that was the location like am I gonna come back so you know you you do judge a book by its cover you do judge a website by its homepage so if you pay a little bit more you get a better experience for your customers and hopefully more sales or whatever it is you're trying to do on your site but let's say you chose your your theme you like it but it might look like other people's themes let's look at customizing it a little bit and again we're in level one of WordPress we choose a theme we customize it within the options that we have for customization later on we'll talk about level two which is to pull back the curtain and edit the code edit the code and edit the code but we'll get to that eventually it can be everything and I've had to do all of those depending on the theme we can do it in WordPress yes exactly 
So let's look here. Under Appearance, Customize. And depending on the theme author, you will see some customization options. Perhaps one that fits your needs, perhaps not. If it does fit your needs, then customize it to your heart's content and you've got a more unique product. Again, you're starting with a foundation and building your house on top of it. If these rudimentary customization options do not meet your needs, then eventually we'll, I'll teach you about level two and you'll be able to customize it even more com completely. But I do have to say we will be dabbling in HTML, CSS, at the minimum, maybe some JavaScript, and probably not PHP, but probably most likely HTML and CSS. We'll get to that in maybe a month or so. But let's see what I've got on my theme. I can change colors. Uh, I can do this color here. Buy premium plan, $99. No thanks. What about this one? Okay, I see. I can choose from these color palettes, and if I want to customize the colors, then it's only $0.99 cents more. Uh, $99 more. Okay, blue is good enough. What's over on heading? Oh, on heading, I can put my own background image. That's cool, maybe. Do you see a header section here? Let's try that. If you've got this, go to header, and you can add an image. So maybe I'll borrow that koala picture we've got. So depending on what the theme author let you customize, you might be able to get a good result. Like right here, I put in my uh, company mascot on the header. Menus, that's like the other screen. This says your theme supports two menus. I've got a primary menu and a footer menu. So maybe I can make a different menu system where my primary menu at the top will have my main sections, and then at the bottom maybe a list of products or something. It depends on your theme, the menus. Front, that's another screen where I've already seen on that other settings screen. Widgets is a very powerful thing, which we'll talk a little bit later next time, because this allows you to add more cool features to your WordPress. What's that? Yeah, but we'll talk about widgets in detail a little later. It's more of a complex subject. Site title. When we first started WordPress, it asked us for the name of a site, of our site. If we want to change that, we can change it there. Um, my particular theme lets me write a site title and a tagline, which is a slogan, and then it shows up right there. Or I can say, don't show the header text. I can turn it off, and it's only showing that graphic. And I guess mine also has a way to show a logo. So on my theme, I can do a logo, a text area, and a header graphic. And then, of course, theme is, um, what is this? On this theme, show tagline, top area content. Some of these you just have to play with. So what does this one do here? does that do? Okay, my particular theme has an area where I can write a message at the very top. Yours might not have that, but it depends on the theme. Let's see what your 
picture with. Here. I really need So we can upload a uh, picture. I'm not sure if we've got pictures on these computers on the map. Let's look under um, all my files. Yeah, I'm missing that's okay. Yeah. The Windows computers had a couple of built-in pictures in the My Documents folder that we didn't put in here. Mm -hmm. All right, so any of these changes that you make, um, make sure you save. Make sure that you save. Um, notice also you've got at the bottom here a quick way to check how responsive is it. Right now it's showing me um, display this site as if it was on a regular computer monitor or display it on a tablet which is smaller so it kind of shrinks like that that's how it'll look or on a phone and it'll shrink like that. So you get a pretty good approximation of what your theme will look like based on different devices. Obviously, to get the best result, you should test it on a real device, but this is a good approximation based on standard sizes. That's why you want to look for a theme that mentions somewhere responsive web design or responsive layout. I'm going to save that. And then you want to click the X to close your customization screen. And if I go to visit site, then I'll see my, uh, my site. All right, so we'll look at one last thing, and then, um, then we'll wrap up. Did you notice that when, when you view your site on every page, on every screen, that is, you, you have the option, share this, or whatever your theme calls it, but on mine it shows tweet about this, put it on Facebook, Google+, or um, click it for WordPress, or, or like it. So again, when we get to this a little later, um, when we incorporate more social media into this class, we'll see that this is a useful thing for your SEO. Um, 
it's a useful thing for uh, for allowing people to share your content because the reason that one of the reasons that sites could be found more often on on on, on search is because uh, Bing and Google and Yahoo see that people care about your site and it can see that by how often it's shared and people visit it and all of that so we can control that we can say what how would you like people to share our content so let's look at that under the dashboard under settings sharing let's go look at that under settings sharing the sharing screen here has a couple of sections that are very useful one of them is publicize we'll do this one later but what's cool about this is okay I'm gonna be writing blogs and then I have to remember to also put them on my Facebook or my Twitter, etc. But if I use this, it'll do it for me. As soon as I publish something on my blog, it'll then also send it to my Facebook or my Tumblr or my Twitter or Path. Anyone ever? Definitely. Has anyone ever heard of Path before? This is the social network. Uh, for people that want to have only their closest friends. So Facebook, you can have like a thousand connections. But on Path, I believe the limit is 150 connections. So all of those people that you're on friends with Facebook because you ob obligation, maybe, you don't have to be friends with them on Path. It's limited. But yeah, this is convenient. Once you post something here, it'll automatically go to your LinkedIn. We'll set this up later. But what I want to look at is this section here under sharing buttons. It's a little confusing, so let me explain it. Down here is what it looks like on the site. Remember, when I'm on my site, it's showing yeah. WordPress, Twitter, etc. So that's how that looks. In the middle is which ones I've activated, and on the top is which ones I have to choose from. So if I also want people to share on Pinterest, from the top here, I drag it to the middle. And now down here it shows that people will be able to share on WordPress, Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and Pinterest. If I really care about Pinterest, I can move it to the first slot right here. People will see it first. If I don't want people to share on, let's say, Google Plus, I can drag it back to the top, and it's not there. But I would say, it, let's let people share everywhere that they want. But I don't want to clutter at all. So that's what this little gray area is for. If you put services in the gray area, what will happen is people have a, an option to choose more networks. You'll see these core ones right away. And if people want to share on these other ones, they can go to more. So I'm going to put the WordPress one under more. I'm going to put all of them under more. People sometimes email uh, your your content we want that we want your your stuff to get emailed to other people so there's a way for it to email uh, put it on people can put it on their LinkedIn on their tumblr etc so I would say no no harm in putting them all there and yes yeah, sometimes people want to print a web page so we can put that there and it's going to look like that. Those three main networks, maybe, or maybe you just want people to really focus on Facebook. So put everything else there. When we talk about social networks, I'll give you recommendations on which ones to focus on. Uh, so we'll talk about that later. But here we're controlling how do we let people share. Don't forget to save. And now when you look at your site, you look at your blog post, for example, you're going to see your sharing options. My particular theme shows it like this, kind of weird, which is the little, the little sharing circles and then a star, which doesn't make sense. And when someone clicks on it, then the others pop out.
and you can fine-tune it. You can play with this on your own. You can fine-tune some other things like show the icons or text, what you want the text to say. Instead of share this, you can make it say, you know, be social. Where would you like to see these? Right now it's showing on all pages and posts. Maybe I don't want it on pages, only posts. Maybe I want it on the front page. You know, you can control that. When we talk about Twitter and so forth, we'll talk about that. Comments. Yeah, we'll talk about these a little bit more later. But the big thing is that here's how you set up your sharing. And it's important to share because if you b visit almost any other website all over the place, you've got a way to share. You know, if I go over to CNN and you see a cool article, um, you'll see right here, right next to it, share that on Twitter, share it on Facebook, email it more. There's CNN. If you go look at, I don't know, somewhere else, uh, Mashable.com. I like visiting that site. Um, so apparently there's going to be some new Avatar movies. And um, if people want to share that, there it is right there on Twitter or Pinterest. So you see the sharing all over the place now. That's part of modern SEO, the ability to share. Share it on StumbleUpon, etc. My blog too. You know, you wanna you see that cool comic book cover and you want your friends to know about it, there's the sharing buttons right there. So share it sometimes so it doesn't so it doesn't look lonely. So that's it for the moment. Any general questions? When you make any changes, remember to save. So for the moment, uh, no no homework just yet, because we've still got a few things we need to learn about WordPress. Uh, once we do that, then we'll have a homework where you're going to show me your site and so forth and requirements and all of that. But that won't be probably for two weeks or so, maybe. So just save your work, and we'll wrap up at this point. If you need a little help, I'll be here until about 7.30. When we come back next time, we'll keep going. We'll be there one moment.